in progress, <laughs> right? Okay, so uh, to give you uh, time, I would like I would like to start by briefly reminding every participant of today's webinar who Rob Howard is. Rob Howard is a very important person for IATF Poland because he uh, has been our vice president for quite a while already. He was voted to become a vice president in September at our annual general meeting. And uh, uh, he is a, an extremely active professional uh, in the area of language teaching. Um, so he has been active uh, uh, in International Association of Teachers of English as Foreign Language, so IATEFL. He has, he, and there he is a joint coordinator for IATF Business English Special Interest Group, and uh, also uh, the joint web and online coordinator for this group. Uh, apart from this, he is a managing partner of Business Language Training Institute uh, and co-founder uh, co of Independent Authors and Publishers Group for almost five years, uh, founder of uh, EFL Talks over six years already, Gdańsk, Pomeranian District, as, as everybody knows, professional English language teaching and business English speaker for 14 years, professional uh, owner of Language Center, for 18 years and so on and so forth. He has been inspiring us with his ideas for quite a while, not only during our webinar series, but also during our annual conferences, which I would like to remind you of today as well. Therefore, I will provide you with the necessary link uh, so that you will be able to register for the conference. Um, and uh, as far as Rob's webinars are concerned, I would like to encourage you to, uh, to watch uh, his past two webinars. The first one, Classroom to Boardroom, Preparing Learners for the Workplace, and also Workplace Learning Trends uh, uh, in terms of it being a new market for teachers. I will provide you with the titles so that you will be able to find them on our YouTube channel. Today, Rob will be telling us uh, about uh, uh, some other aspects, but very important, uh, uh, artificial intelligence chat. Why do you need to live with it? Start. Yes, so uh, so that is that is something that many of us, me included, are sometimes really afraid of uh, hearing the incredible stories um, presented on various uh, by various media. So enlighten us uh, about uh, it in the area of education. Over to you, Rob. Well, thank you very much, and. Yeah, I've, I've done quite a few of these webinars. Stop calling me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm teasing. Um, <laughs> it's every time I do one, you've already signed me up for the next one. So, but I'm happy to be here and happy to do them for you. And glad everybody is here tonight. Let me just share my screen. And no sound, so here we go. Mm -hmm. And um, so we're live streaming, we're recording, we're everything. Yes, we are everything. Thank you for this friendly reminder. Oh, well, I always like it matters to a lot to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, um, what I wanted to talk about is AI chat, and obviously, unless you've had your head buried in the sand for the past few months, you've heard a lot about it. And you're gonna keep hearing a lot more about it. And I'm doing, you know, paying a lot of attention to it. I use it. I've been working with it since it became available. Um, getting ready for Dash 4 and I'll probably buy it next week. Um, it is available for sale now. And the question is, why do we have to do it? And this is Lucinia. Yeah, already told you everything about me, but chat GPT. 
Um, here's the thing. A little quotation for you. And this is, you know, you said it right at the very beginning. People are a little afraid. People are scared. And most people, most professionals, and especially teachers, are afraid of change. And this is just one more change that's coming down the pike. Now, to give you an idea, I'm not quite this old, but in the old days, people said, oh, when we start doing writing and putting things down, students are going to lose their ability to speak. Didn't happen. Jump forward millions of years, and this looks like what I had in, back in the 60s and 70s, the encyclopedia. Everybody said, now people aren't going to do research. Everything is going to be right at their fingertips in an encyclopedia. You know what? Didn't change anything. When I was in school, we used to cheat on our papers. Instead of reading the book, we'd buy cliff notes and we'd plagiarize the heck out of it and read these and write our papers based on cliff notes. Everybody was up in outrage. This is going to kill education. Didn't. Then came the computer. People said, oh, the computer in the classroom. This is going to make people stop thinking. Well, they may be right there. <laughs> Because I think sometimes we have. Then the interactive smart board. I remember when these came into the classroom and people said, some said, oh, it's a revolution. We can do so much. Other teachers were afraid of it and didn't want to use it and, you know, kept writing on it with regular markers and um, with permanent markers and didn't want to embrace what they could do with it. Then came the cell phone and everybody said, oh, students aren't going to learn anything anymore. They have cell phones. It's going to destroy the education system. Hasn't. Then came the apps, the apps that we use and people using apps in the classroom. Um, I'll agree the only app in the classroom that did destroy education is Cahoots. But apps in the classroom didn't kill education. And then <laughs> before COVID, everybody said, no, teaching online, these online things, they'll never work. Nothing is good going to come out of it. And, you know, got that one wrong, too. And. Everybody now, you see all these stories and these people writing these scathing bad things on social media about how inaccurate it is, how there's mistakes, how bad, how it's going to kill education. I read one today by somebody who is well-known, um, and I. it's funny because I remember this person about seven years ago complaining about other technology that said was going to ruin education and he was wrong then too and he's wrong now you know this is what i'm talking about that we need to just roll with the changes the idea is we cannot fight what's coming we need to learn to work with it. And there's so much that can be done with chat GPT. Now, is chat GPT perfect? No. Is AI perfect? No. Are teachers perfect? No. Are course works perfect? No. So why do we expect perfection out of chat GPT when we don't have it out of everything else. 
chat GPT and open AI, artificial intelligence is here to stay, at least for a couple of years when something new will go and replace that. Because technology goes faster and faster. Machine learning is amazing at the rate of speed incrementally how fast machine learning is going to increase um i have friends who worked for google and worked on these systems before and we're not even seeing half of what's available yet because they're still working on it and um it's the future i'm sorry we need to embrace it and we need to learn how to work with it not work against it and not be afraid of it. Now, if you pay attention in the last few weeks, um, I'm not sure of the exact timing. GPT has been out now for a few months. Um, Google Bard is due to make it to the market soon. I believe Bing is already running chat GPT and OpenAI GPT-4 this is the new one. Um, this is available now. And as I said, one of my students in in IT bought it um, just yesterday, and he's already working with it. And there's just so much advancement and so much that can be done with it. We need to learn to embrace it and work with it and not against it, because our students need us to help them. And what we need to think about is how can we help them by using chat GPT? Well, there's a lot of different ways. And what I would, um, you know, take you back to is the idea of fake news. Remember just a few years ago, we were all talking about fake news. Now, what could we have done with that as teachers, and many of us did this, is try to help teach the student how to discern between real news and fake news, and to figure out how to work and research by using search engines, by going to multiple sources to try and find out where the truth is. So this was great for the English language class, and it gave you lots to work with. Now, we can be doing the same with chat GPT. I don't know how much you've worked with it. Um, you know, I've seen some of the things that people have done, and they'll put in a simple question. And chat GPT is not just about simple questions. It's coming up with the proper prompt to get the exact information you need. Now, in order to get the correct prompt to get the right information, you need to work on your structure of your questioning and the language. So just right there, working with students on how to properly get the information they're looking for out of GPT, this is tremendous. Because we know as teachers, we always ask the questions. Students are great at answering questions. They're not that great at asking questions. And I noticed this with back with Google. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oftentimes, my students would ask me, how do I find information on this? I said, just put it into the Google search. Well, what do I ask? Ask what you're looking for. But I don't know how to ask for it in English. And that dawned on me, I have the same thing. I'm here in Poland. I don't speak Polish. And if I'm looking for something in Poland sometimes, of course, I'll do a search in English. And I don't always come up with what I'm looking for because the search engines and what they're looking for for the answers, let's say I'm looking for a place to buy tongue in Gdansk. 
Um, I don't know how to ask for that in Polish. So of course, I'm not going to come up with a local butcher shop that sells that. Could be one right around the corner from me, but I won't find that. So working with language and teaching them how to ask the right question, to ask for the right information, this is an exciting use of chat GPT in the classroom because it is an advanced search engine. Now, um, I figured I'd modernize it and go with Nick Jonas. I don't know who this guy is. Singer, I think. But we need to embrace the change. We need to be open to what's coming down the road. And um, I'll tell you, there's some really funny stories with chat GPT. Uh, one of them, one of my favorites, I remember when it first started, I had a conversation with Evan Frendo, who was the previous coordinator for BSIG. And he put in one day, what's the difference between business English and ESP? And in 30 seconds, it came out with a brilliant answer. He said, that would have taken me a month to write, not a month, but it did it in 30 seconds. And it was spot on for the information. But we also hear stories of looking for information and the information that comes back is not very accurate. Remember, what this is doing, it's a search engine that's looking at what's available on the internet. Chat GPT up till 2021, GPT-4 up till now. So it's only as good as the source information that it finds on the internet. It was an interesting one that um, my joint coordinator for BSIG, Maria, and I do a lot of writing. And we wrote something specifically uh, that was put into the, I the IHFO magazine. And when we were searching for something, we actually came up with um, our own article was the answer. So we would be plagiarizing ourselves, which is kind of funny. So as I say, it's only as good as the information that's on the internet today and that it can find and that it can get. So no, it's not perfect. Again, what is perfect out there today? Not the news. So just wanted to give you, when people think that there's nothing that I can do in the classroom with chat GPT, I want to prove you wrong. Just um, going through and thinking of some of the ideas of what you can do. I'm not going to read every single one of them. But working on error correction exercises, different writing prompts. I can put these questions in and ask for these. By the way, this list is generated by ChatGPT. I asked, what are things that can be done with ChatGPT in the classroom? And this is the list, part of the list that it came back with. The list is still running. Working on pronunciation. You can specifically put in the level that you want to work with, the particular grammar points you want to work with. You can even talk about the content or context. And all this will be generated for you. Question and answer practice. Sentence structure. Working with expressions. Different role plays. Presentation skills. Business English scenarios. Working on interview skills, public speaking activities, debating skills, email writing. I'll go slower so you can read them all. As you can see, 
there's a lot of different things that we can do at the touch of a button. There's no need to be afraid of this or run away from it. We can use this as a powerful tool. And as a few articles that have been coming out lately, even the publishers are finding ways to use this now. So it's a great way of generating any kind of specific content you want. If you have writer's, writer's block and you can't think of ideas, chat GPT will give you a list of ideas that you can work on. And it keep going. Just think of the exercises that we normally take all the time to prepare ourselves and how time consuming it is to come up with materials for the classroom. Just being creative enough to come up with dialogues and sentences that we can use, writing prompts that we can use, chat GPT in seconds can come up with them. No, we don't have to accept everything that it says. We don't have to use it, but we can use it as a jumping off point for creating our own lessons. And quite frankly, I don't have problems with students using chat GPT. Writing has changed. Writing will continue to change. Remember, we don't write a, a lot anymore. We text. We do short, short messages to people. More and more, when you're working in business, you're working with things like Trello. You're working with Slack, like we use in many of the groups, in order to talk with each other. Most people use WhatsApp. So much shorter, faster messages. So the importance of writing isn't as important as it used to be. And the fact that we focus on writing when it comes to business writing, that's becoming much different these days. Journalist, journalist writing is starting to change because nobody is reading long drawn out articles. They want shorter articles, get to the point faster. So writing styles are changing. Content creation, quizzes, games, any kind of interactive language learning. We can do simulations. Um, if you go through social media, some people will tell you about conversations that they've been having with chatbots you can actually carry on a conversation with the chatbot if you're so interested. Um, a lot of interactive language. Look, VR, robotics, AI avatars, smart speakers, working on learning events and building communities. All this can be done. I hope I'm overwhelming you with all of these. Grammar correction, vocabulary building, pronunciation practice. Look at how rich in context this stuff is. So much we can do. Why are we afraid of it? So what I suggest you do is start to play with ChatGPT. It's, it's free right now. You can work with the basic, you can play around with it. When you get more into it, there's different ways that you can buy into using chat GPT-4. You can pay on a monthly basis if you wanna use it that often, or you can pay as you go with it. I noticed today they charge like two cents for every thousand um, kilograms of information. You can say, I can keep going and keep going. So right there, 
there's thousands of more ideas. That was just 150 of them. So there's plenty that we can do with it. And what we need to do is to stop being afraid of it, to stop shying away from it. Because you know what? Your students, especially if they're young, they're already going to start working with it. They will keep, become more expert at it than you will if you don't practice. And there's nothing worse than being left behind because you were afraid to make change, as this says here. So with that, I actually, <clears throat> because my voice is dying quickly, I want to open it up for discussion and I want to hear your ideas. But um, my general point is we need to embrace it, get used to it, because AI is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. The question is, will we be here if we don't start embracing it now? So that's one of the fastest presentations I've done yet. But I'd like to open this up for discussion and I wanna get some feedback from you because that's the whole idea of this. We're sharing with other people. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I wanna welcome you to turn on your cameras Open up your mics, raise your hand, whatever, and let's discuss it. Yes, let me just go back and see if I missed anything here in the chat. Hello, Natalia, the first one to say hi to me. You You're are muted. muted. Natalia, you are muted. Unmute yourself. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thank Hi. you uh, for your lecture. It's uh, very interesting. And uh, I think that um, that we are part of the change. Uh, technology is changing and uh, the world is changing and we should adjust um, to this uh, situation, I think. Um, and I, I, in my opinion, uh, our students admire us teachers when they see that we are using uh, new devices, yes. apps. Um, yes, because we, we, we must be a part of it. We can't exclude ourselves, ourselves from the, um, from the process, process, yes? Exactly. Uh, I heard from my mom about this uh, chat GPT um, two days ago, and uh, she told me I, I couldn't believe that something like this exists. Mm -hmm. And I started to think about homeworks, you know, because sometimes um, my students have homework to write. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, informal letter or formal letter. So now, you know, they can easily cheat. Uh, well, here's the thing. Students are always going to cheat. We always did when we were kids. The yes. thing is, are they cheating correctly? So yes. we need to get them to discern that the cheating that they're doing is good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And in order to do that, we need to work on the language. And I'm, I'm a firm believer that, you know, we do less and less these days and students have access to more and more. Um, Fernando, I'm gonna pick on you, Benvindo. You have Hello. gray hair. You have yeah. gray hair, so you're old like me. You know, <laughs> I remember, when I was doing math in high school, we were not allowed to use calculators because they just came out. 
mm. which was ridiculous. They should have been teaching us how to use a calculator instead of taking it away. Like, Fernando, do you remember the slide rule? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah, for sure. They taught us how to use the slide rule to do math, but they didn't teach us how to use a calculator. It was, no, it's forbidden. So we need to teach them how to use chat GPT and AI, just like any other tool that came along in the past. So. Yes. Like you said before, um, now we are used to um, use, uh, for example, interactive whiteboards uh, yeah. during our classes. Um, so it's a new device. Yep. It's just one more tool. And you know what? There's going to be 100 more tools that come out before you all retire. Uh, hopefully, I'll be gone before then. But you know we have to keep learning thanks natalia thank you thank you fernando to the bang yes uh it's a erasure about technology and how fast it's changing you know and 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 how fast we need to adapt to it to keep up with the jones it's really important mm -hmm. um we need to know how to get our students acquainted with all of these new uh Technologies that are available, especially with, with AI technology. But I also believe that it's really important for the institutions or for the places where we work at to get us prepared also. Yeah. Because I mean, most most of the most of us do this by curiosity. Sure. Or, you know, we just surf online and we access an app, we learn how to use it by ourselves. But this is not easy, you know, and there are so many. There's so much information out there. There's so many sites that are reliable, some that are not, mm -hmm. you know? And and it, and it's many times it's not user-friendly. So if it's difficult for us, you know, imagine for, for some of our students also, you know? So sure. we need we need to have proper training, not for, only from the institutions, but also from the publishers, okay? People who, who make books. Yep. Uh, nowadays, everybody is, is making platforms. You know, everybody's having presentation tools. Some of these tools are really, really, really nice, but some other ones, I mean, they're really, really hard, yeah. to, you know, to get acquainted with. And I think people are like, you know, sometimes they're, they're overdoing things and they're making things that could be simple, complicated without any need to do that, you know? Exactly. And um, I remember when the interactive whiteboard first came in and um, the school that I was at got them and they were put up without any training. And I just went in the room and locked myself up for a day and a half and tried everything. I, I had to reset it like five times because I kept freezing it. But once I figured it out and then showed the other teachers how to use it, it was great. And yeah, I, I, I'll go a little bit further than you. Remember when we had VH? VH, uh, VHR in the classroom. When the videos came out, yeah. you know, we had video cassette recorders in the classroom. We had beautiful TVs, mm -hmm. but we had no material available whatsoever in any I syllabus. Could. So yeah. I, I remember that the school was fully equipped and we spent almost two years. I mean, we had to edit the films, copy the films from a, from a movie or from a commercial, edit mm -hmm. it, create the activity, put everything together. And only after I don't know how many years that publishers started to yeah. create video material for the classroom. So this is this is something that you know, um, this is something to think about, right? It's not just the teachers. The support sure. the teachers need is really important, right? But I think what I like about ChatGPT is I think suddenly, as teachers, we're getting um, the ability to support ourselves that we can create content much quicker and not have to rely on the publisher anymore. Because quite frankly, the publisher isn't relying on the teacher anymore. Any publishers here? <laughs> but the publishers, they don't care about us anymore. The publishers are going direct to the students now with their own platforms. Their money isn't in publishing books for the classroom anymore. And unfortunately, we've been bypassed. 
So don't expect a lot of support from them. We need to support each other by producing content and curating content that we can use and share. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, this is, I, I think in some respects, well, you're, you're from Salvador. I was from Rio and, you know, we were lucky because we had a lot of good organizations there to be able to share materials. Um, this is the key. And you have here in Poland, you have a great organization with IATEFL Poland and we'll get materials to share with everybody. But uh, yeah, thanks so much for sharing. Um, let me see, Corina, did you want to say something? I have to unmute, let everybody in here. Uh, yes, hi. Uh, well, you just said we should turn on our, our cameras and I complied. Good. <laughs> just to show I was paying attention. Great, thank but, uh, you. <laughs> yes, but um, for me, it's really great that we have all these shortcuts. I really uh, remember how I would uh, ruin my beautifully manicured nails writing on those horrible blackboards and now I just love the whiteboard <laughs> and uh, all that technology has to offer yep. really good and even uh, the pandemic has been a blessing in disguise well, it was was I mean was that's over now <laughs> I do hope um, because uh, we have learned a lot about platforms I had no idea about everything that yeah. was well, this before is, the pandemic. This is a funny thing that um, it's kind of ironic. I, if you notice, the name of my company is Online Language Center. I've been teaching online for 20 years. Um, I'm trying to teach online for 20 years because it was hard to convince people <coughs> Lucky for you, COVID came along and it made it automatic for everybody. But, you know, and so going back to something Fernando said, um, the institutions obviously fell flat because they were not ready for mm -hmm. this to happen. Teachers were not ready. Institutions, all of education was not ready. I was. But, you know, and, you know, we can't let this happen again. That's the thing. Go ahead. And the, the material was available. We had already a lot of beautiful uh, apps and sites, you know, that we should have been trained on how to use it a long time ago. I've yeah. been using online resource for almost 10, 15 years now. Yeah, and I've been doing yeah, it for know, 20. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the COVID only made us realize how important that is, but I don't think we needed that. You know, yeah. there, was, there was no need to have to go through COVID in order to exactly. upgrade ourselves, you know? Exactly. So we can't let this happen again. So far it is. I don't know how many places out there are, you know, working on coming up with materials and ways to teach how to work with chat GPT. Yes, everybody's talking about it. Um, somebody, it, it was... an. Another person from um, ELT put a great thing up on on uh, social media a while ago. He said, funny how all of a sudden everybody's dog is an expert on chat GPT. You know, everybody's talking about it and writing about it, but what are they offering us? Not a lot yet. Maya, I know you had your hand up. Let me yeah. give you a chance. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, well, it's uh, morning starting in uh, where I am from. So, hi from Tbilisi, Georgia. Um, well, just a couple of issues I would like to um, uh, pick from the discussion you had. Well, first of all, um, you were talking about publishers uh, who we are not supposed to very much rely on. I, I agree with you. And there's another thing. Well, no publisher and no course book is written for my particular group. It is written for an average student, for average, let's say, B2 or B1 or whatever level student. 
and chat gpt is uh, right here to offer you a very much focus to your particular group mm -hmm. uh, well particular need that the group at that very moment has mm -hmm. so that makes it really incredible and very yeah. useful Tool. So yes, we have to help ourselves with that and great that such a support mm -hmm. already exists and we can use it. Now, the other point I wanted to make is just the institutions and uh, well, when they are ready to help us or whatever. Mm, perhaps I'm lucky uh, because I work uh, um, at a university, which is Ilya State University in Tbilisi. And this is the place which has always been at the forefront of the innovation of change. And uh, well, if they don't support, I mean, don't do it themselves, they give us green light to everybody who works there, okay? Experiment, try, and we will be there to support you whenever you need that. Uh, and the other point, one more point there is like, COVID, yes, it was not so, it was, um, well, okay, terrible experience for the whole world, but um, I would say that COVID boosted sort of the need for, well, a lot of the skills that, well, I myself and the teachers I work with uh, tried and managed to develop. The mm -hmm. first semester we had online, completely online, I can say it was a disaster, a disaster in our terms of everything. Now, when I think back at the world at that time, it, it was terrible. But, uh, well, the second semester was already a good thing. We were trying to find new uh, tools, new online possibilities, mm -hmm. and, well, that was great. So, well, yeah, that's, uh, there, that, that's actually what I wanted to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I wanted to, something came up in the chat and I want to mm -hmm, talk mm -hmm. about that. Let me back up to the original. Um, yes. It was Agatha yes. um, about the copyright situation with GPT generated materials. Mm -hmm. um, now, yes, what people are saying is right because the stuff is made by algorithm. It isn't really owned by anybody yet. But the proper thing to do, and I think we should do as teachers, actually, if you look at my abstract, I had chat GPT write my abstract for this. And I put at the end of it, generated by chat GPT. And um, I went through and checked with a lot of it, the proper way that we should be uh, referencing chat GPT now is just if we take any information that we use in any of our material, we should put generated by chat GPT and the date that it was done. So we should give credit to it. Um, this will release you from any liability because remember, we don't know where they source their information from and they could have taken a direct quote from Fernando and if I just copy it and put it in there, then I'm actually plagiarizing him. Mm -hmm. So because we don't know where the source came from, we should, just to cover ourselves, put generated by chat GPT in the date. Now with that, um, there are <laughs> there's programs now that will tell you, it'll go through whatever the writing was that was done and tell you how much of that was written by a GPT, by a chat program, because they know how to read the algorithm. So if you're wondering about a student's papers, you know, coming in, you can run it through. Now, there's also other programs that take what you get from chat GPT and then re-paraphrase it and make it so it seems plagiarism free, we're always gonna be fighting this. And you know what, why bother? You know, I still look at it the same way. A student who's cheating is only cheating themselves. Mm -hmm. That's something I was gonna mention, you know? We have to, I think that we, we have to make a culture 
Mantis should realize that exactly what you said, right? I mean, if he's aware of this, then yeah. he's, do, he's doing the right thing, right? Yeah, come on. We we were brilliant as kids, you know, you know, writing on the arm and oh, there it is, you know. <laughs> I, I remember, you know, in, in driver's ed, we had a multiple choice test and we used to have a coding system that we could tell the whole room what the answer was with like, <clears throat> and everybody passed driver's ed that year. Um, you know, we're pretty smart and cheating, so it's always going to happen. Don't waste time. Teach them how to use it the right way. But the big thing is um, that we're going to see in the future is how to properly ask for the information that you want to get. This is going to be critical. I'm still learning myself. And you can get extremely specific on what you want. Um, I think it was Scott Thornberry, when it first came out, put in, write me a short story at a B1 level working with, and he gave so many different specifics and it came out with a beautiful, you know, well, um, well-written essay at exactly the level that he wanted with exactly the words that he needed. So if you ask the right questions, you'll get a better answer. And that's what we need to start teaching people, how to write the better questions and better prompts. So let's see. Kelly, Kelly wants you? to say something, I see. The raised hand, Kelly. Kelly, asked Kelly yes, Kelly. Kelly. Yes, hello, you... everyone. Can you hear Hi. me? Yes, we can. But we okay. can't see you. Sometimes. Yes, I know. I'm not. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I am at home visiting my son, so this is not necessarily the right time to turn okay. on the camera, but what the hell. Um, I just wanted to pitch in and share my experience mm -hmm. with creating. Uh, I've been actually training the bot pretty much from the beginning because I was involved in other AI projects as well before that. Mm -hmm. uh, I primarily use it to create writing mm -hmm. material, writing tasks. Mm -hmm. And uh, commenting on what Bob just said, <clears throat> the instructions that you give it matter. Yes. And the more you refine them, the better it is. Mm -hmm. And it is scary good how fast it picks up. Mm -hmm. Point in case. In one of my last uh, trials, I gave it a total of 12 words and it was even the number of the words is not by luck, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, I chose 12 items, advanced, uh, primarily more than half were adjectives, adjectives that came along with, that came in clear collocates, in, mm -hmm. in narrow collocates. Uh, and a couple of random verbs that in no way associate with those adjectives and their collocates. Mm -hmm. And I asked it to produce uh, original sentences with those words. And I had given the words in their part of speech. Mm -hmm. So I would say with the adjective, blah, blah, with the noun, blah, blah, and so on and so forth. So it would give me those 12 sentences. And then I would say, okay, I need you to rewrite the following sentences. And I would copy paste the sentences in a more advanced level, mm -hmm. more advanced academic content. And I would do it again and again until it got to my sense of C2 level mm -hmm. sentences. And then I would instruct it to use the words because I had trained it enough with the words. And then it would be, okay, now I need you to produce an essay of 250 words at C1 level, but I had already coached it in terms of what is C1. Yep for the sefer. Mm -hmm. I have done this for months, you know? Wow. So it had a sense of what I was doing with it. Mm -hmm. So I, once I got to the level where I was, okay, now give me an essay of 300 words with all of these. It would give me an essay, but mm -hmm. the, the two words, the two verbs that are outliers from the 12 word list would always be the pickle in it, you know what I mean? Because to, in, to incorporate those two particular verbs, 
the context would have to change. Change, yeah. Okay. The 10 words, it would assimilate very nicely into a plot, but those mm -hmm. two words, he would have to go off script. And it's funny how I said he. <laughs> it has to go off script, okay, <laughs> in order to in incorporate them. And then yeah. I would come back and I would write the task instructions. I'm basically at the point where I'm training it to mm -hmm. understand better simply from the instructions. Mm -hmm. So I'm at a point where I'm like, okay, I want you to rewrite the essay, but this time I need you to give me a more cohesive plot. Now it knows what cohesive is and imagine yeah. doing this three times round back to back. Right. And then it will give you something that is cohesive, but the catch is you can't do it in 300 words. Mm -hmm. My word limitations are another pickle. So even though my instructions have become much, much, much more clearer and precise, precise, yeah. I would say the right word for it is at this point, discreet. Mm -hmm. My instructions are very discreet. There is always markers in the task instructions that it cannot match. Yeah. So the, the word limit is a big hurdle for it. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But in well, exams, we need, we have word limits you know like you yeah. need to write between 220 and 260 for yeah. the c1 and for toefl for for toefl you need 300 in 30 right. minutes so the word limit is another thing yeah and there's much 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 more but oh, uh, yeah. my advice to anybody who wants to dabble in it is pick a macro skill and stick to it yeah or pick a particular task and stick to it like if you're going to invest time and energy in training the bot or for you to explore what it can possibly do don't be all over the place Right. Just stick to one skill, one type of task, one technique, one strategy, one, one something and stick to it. And okay. you will also get better and better at it. Just it's like life, potential. isn't it? Huh? It's just like life. Find one good thing and stick to it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's, um, okay. don't you wish your students learned as quickly as AI did? I do. <laughs> students learn how to cheat really fast though that's a yeah. better motivator hey that's learning learning is learning it's a strategy okay. i'm sorry but i have to disagree here that ain't learning like there are certain things in life that you can't fake it until you make it i this know is not but one of them you know language learning is it, not one of them at least at high levels okay or hey i i learned level. to convince all of you i'm an english teacher years ago so <laughs> here's to cheating <laughs> um, <laughs> it was lovely to see you all that's it for me thank you so much for sharing <laughs> and it is addictive it's very addictive you're going to yeah. start picking one thing and next thing you know you're going to be in it for like two three hours Kelly, we are all thankful to you. There was a message in the chat box, which probably you are not aware of, uh, from one of the participants thanking you for your great contribution. Yes, so uh, from Yoasha Kosakowska. So thank you on behalf of Yoasha and all of us, of course. <laughs> no, no worries. Pleasure, pleasure. Great. And um, let me see. Joanna asks... Um, about asking the right questions, what would you say are the challenges? Um, do we have another hour? <laughs> no. That, I wish we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this is it. The challenges of asking the questions are, you know, Kelly just touched on it a little bit. It's, you know, getting specifically something that the chat bot is used to has learned already mm -hmm. and um you know we know let me see um other fernando where are you from i'm from well originally i'm from peru ah, but, I live, but okay. I live in brazil you did it right there you see i didn't ask enough information because if you ask me where am i from it's like what time is it because I was born in the States, so I'm from Boston, but I lived all up and down the East Coast. Then I moved to Brazil. Now I'm in Poland. Um, next week, I'll be in Spain. So where am I from? I didn't ask enough of the question to get the answer I was looking for. And thank you, Fernando. <laughs> 
I just learned how to make Kaza, by the way. Do you know Kaza? Do you remember that from Peru? Kaza. Yeah, yeah, of course. This potato with, uh, yes. yeah, Kaza, Kaza Limea, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I made it with um, with salmon. Which, salmon, yeah, which is really good. Here we call it Lasso, so I call it Lasso Kaza. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, it's... Um, that's exactly what I mean, asking the right information the first time. Because was the question enough? And most people will, students especially, will stick with a very, very simplistic question. And then they're disappointed because they're not getting the information they want. And I realized this years ago with my business English students because they go to a conference, <clears throat> they understand everything they're hearing from the talks, but they're afraid to ask questions because they don't know how to ask the right question. And that's when I realized that questioning, sometimes we could teach them more than just answering. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is that's the biggest challenge. Um, Chat GPT prompters. Oh, there'll be, um, yeah, uh, there'll be a million jobs coming out now with Chat GPT. You're making us hungry. Okay, good. It's delicious. You have to try it. Um, recipe, please, 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 please. Well, you have to buy my recipe book. That's EFL, <laughs> EFL Talks Recipes. Um, it's not in the first issue. It'll be in the second volume. Okay. <laughs> it's Chet, it, people always think I'm kidding. Eh? Uh, um, they always think I'm kidding. I did write a real recipe <laughs> book. And if you're familiar with EFL Talks, it's 10 and 10. People do talks on different parts of English um, with, for 10 minutes with 10 slides. The idea of this, it's 10 ingredients that you prepare in 10 minutes. And they are actual real food recipes. My goodness. <laughs> available now on EFL Talks. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that'll be in my next cookbook. I'll put in Lhasa Causa. Causa. <laughs> Good. What do you say, boss? Are you cutting me off yet? No. Do you mean I'm the boss? Of course you're my boss. I, and you're mine. No. <laughs> yes, so we are two bosses controlling each other. So what, what are you going to do? <laughs> well, boss. Um, well, any anybody else have any questions or anybody who hasn't Ah, Ursula wants it. Okay. It's available today on Amazon. Just look for EFL Talks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Is there anything similar to chat GPT for spoken language? There, there's a ton of um, chat boxes that you can actually have a conversation with. Um, I haven't tried any of those yet. You know, I get enough of people talking back at me with my students. I don't need to practice talking, but I haven't gone that far yet. I'm using it just for doing some research, trying to be creative. You know, you know when you're trying to come up with oh, I got to make 10 questions for the student to answer. And I'm just not feeling creative today. Chat, give me 10 questions that require conditionals. There they are. You know? Um, so I've been working mostly with the typing. I haven't worked with the spoken one yet. But I'm sure there's something. I, I saw something. Let me see if I can find it here really, really fast. No, I'm not going to find it. I already got rid of it. Yeah. 
Very good. Forget about so, it. I lost it. Not a problem. Share it with us. So, you, are you coming to Poland, Fernando, and joining all of the? I'd love to. Poland? I just found it. It's called T M Y N. Have you ever heard about that? T M M Y N. It generates uh, our AI chats, and students can interact with these AI chats. That's okay. what's interesting. I'll check it out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, I haven't tried any of them yet. Um, I know uh, there was a reporter on, I think it was CNN about three weeks ago, who was having a chat with one of them and complained about the thing started to get kind of sexual with him. <laughs> and he, he was a little thrown off as like, is this really an AI or is it a person? Uh, yeah, so I, I would be interested in trying it out, but you know, it could replace Tinder. <laughs> Who knows? But yeah, we'll see. There, there'll be so many things. There, they have these drawing bots and everything else. There's one to do everything these days. They're writing music, mm -hmm. not necessarily good stuff, but you know, if you hear some of the pop stuff coming out, that <laughs> it's the same um so yeah it, it's gonna totally change the world and again we have an opportunity if we get used to it now and we start working with it now you know we can be on the bleeding edge if you want to call it that um and at least be up to date you know so good hi ursula yeah, I wave at her, but she <laughs> didn't see you are you are always noticed. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> don't be sorry. I, uh, I like seeing you. Oh, I wanted to say if you don't mind uh, something about um, teaching students questions. Yeah, that's what I have noticed that mostly we teachers teach answers. Mm -hmm. We are used to asking questions. And That's we it. are used to receiving answers, okay? So I do have some techniques for that, but maybe next time I am here as a presenter, I will say. But uh, one of them is that, for example, I sit in front of the class and then I ask them to prepare one question for me, okay? I give them time, whatever the level, doesn't matter, okay? But mm -hmm. they cannot repeat the question, okay? Then at the end, I say, okay, now, uh, let's say next time you will have to prepare two questions for Marisha. Marisha will be here answering, okay? And it really works. It's simple, it's mm -hmm. easy, and I think it's okay. Of course, we can we can uh, we can uh, point to the tenses we want them to use. Mm -hmm. If you want to practice grammar, it's still okay. We can ask them to prepare questions concerning holidays, whatever. Okay, so. Yeah. I think it's great, but th that was the good point that we we should think about instructions, as you said, that sometimes we forget about yeah. simple instructions. And the second thing is questioning or uh, yeah. asking students prepare questions. Okay, so yeah. thank you for all the and things. By the way, said. by the way, the next webinar with Ula will be on the 5th of April. Yeah, so I that is in that. two weeks already. She will be telling us about using flashcards. So please mm -hmm. remember about it, everyone. Mm -hmm. Next week, right. it's me. I'm replacing yeah, know, Willow me. Barnowski because Willow is very seriously yeah. ill and we all keep our <laughs> fingers crossed for her. Please oh. keep, you keep them crossed and then uh, after this webinar about uh, the use of personal profile and personal pro uh, professional uh, portfolio mm -hmm. there will be Ula with using flashcards so welcome <laughs> Rob I have a re my, our last question can yeah. we use chat GPT to ask it to elaborate uh, sentences or text with mistakes of errors yes will it do that Yes, it, you need to be very specific. Yeah, I haven't done it with it, but yes, I've been told that you have to specifically ask what you're looking for the analysis of the sentence to do. Is that right, Kelly? Okay, that, that is correct. That's that is correct. That's, that's a nice resource. That, um, you could... 
it's very good if you are sorry let me turn on my camera this yeah. i think it's extremely rude to speak with the camera off. <laughs> That's okay. um let's so regroup here what is happening uh, I'm in the process of marinating olives. I'm sorry. Ooh, yum. <laughs> oh, <laughs> some delicious dish. <laughs> Speaking of food <laughs> earlier. <laughs> um, so imagine that you copy paste. Uh, if, if your students are doing their homework uh, in a Google document on the drive, for those of you who are online, you know what I mean? You mm -hmm. can copy the whole text, uh, sentences, whatever. And you can put it in uh, the bot and you can ask it to correct it. But you have to explain analytically what you need to be corrected. If there's a glitch, you have to dig deeper. So for example, if you're saying um, correct punctuation, that on its own, it might still miss some things, okay? But uh, if, if you say, um, or if you say correct subordinate clauses, cor correct any subordinate mistakes, subordinate clause mistakes, uh, you, you need, that's not good enough. You can't just say word order or wrong word in context. Like this is not the language that- it No, 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 sound. sorry. But, but I, what I was asking was the opposite. If we can ask G, chat GPT to elaborate texts or sentences with mistakes. Oh, to make something yes. that has a mistake in exactly. it. Exactly. So that was, so that can be analyzed afterwards by the students, like some kind of error analysis activity produced by chat gpt you know what i mean the yes. reverse yes yeah i haven't done that i can't help you with that because yeah. that could the help point, that could help the you whole know. point of training so far is that it gets things right yeah Nothing i mean what about things wrong. you know if yeah. it gets but things wrong it could be interesting. interesting yeah it could be another way well, to use it you know what you do is you have your students write first drafts and those are the ones with mistakes yeah. And you, you, you know, hand swap. those around. Um, swap between the students. You don't have yeah. to. Ask no, you the you could focus on specific <laughs> mistakes. You know, yeah. you'd you'd probably have to be too specific to explain mm -hmm. what it is you're looking for. It would probably be easy to have it write something, and then you physically go in and make the Correct. mistake. Correct. Yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Correct. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I would I'm guess try that, that. easier. That idea yeah. just came up right now, so. Yeah, no, it's not a bad idea, especially it's a great way to train editors. <laughs> you no, know? also the students. You give them a text that's of mistakes. That's one thing that the board will the not mistakes. be able to do the more yeah. we train it, actually. It's fascinating. Oh, my God, I have to bring this up for discussion in the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> See, more work for you. Uh... <laughs> Get back to so those cool. olives. <laughs> There's a bunch of us, and we're really obsessed with it, and we've mm -hmm. been working with it for like over a year. Sorry. So, Kelly, are you in Poland? Uh, I'm based in uh, Madrid, Rob. Oh, okay. I was. But just I'm there. Greek American. I'm visiting. I'm visiting my son in Greece right now. I landed. Oh, okay. Here. But all your job couldn't be done in Poland. Yes. <laughs> What? I the wish it, it were. I wish it were the case. Yes, but <laughs> that's not the case. Handpicked, handpicked from my mom's olive grove at the foot of Mount Olympus. You're all welcome. Um, <laughs> my goodness. I'll and be there sure. in August. <laughs> oh my God! Great. You know, now I was just thinking. You know, the exercise, a very common exercise in the writing sections of course books, is where you get a text a model. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's usually mistakes in it, and the students have to identify the type of mistake and correct it. Yes, so for exactly. example, if it's a WWWO punctuation, spelling, and so on and so forth, I don't think it can generate that. It would be I interesting. Think, I think you just Imagine discovered something that it won't be able because you don't understand. Like the more you train it, it organically is supposed to get better, better, not yeah. worse. Not like, worse. I don't think it will be able to tell the difference <laughs> between the deliberate direct. mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah and mistake do you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah no. well, oh, basically it's like it's you know like it's the thing between mistake and error that we say mm -hmm. <laughs> like students don't know the difference between, i think it won't be able to tell the difference between a mistake and an error oh I my know, god this is fascinating i need to keep notes now i'm inspired <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> Very good. So in July, we're going to talk about um, 
in my last webinar, we're going to talk about food. Sound good? Great, great. That will be the final food. <laughs> That will be the, the final webinar in this year's series. So everybody mm. get ready, a glass of wine. Yes, we will be celebrating with, with Rob. Yes, think about some special wine. toast. Vodka. <laughs> As well, why not? <laughs> Whatever. Well, okay, I now I make... to, you know, Rob, what? I have to stop recording because it's becoming dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's all right. I already have a reputation and you guys still voted me in. 